How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stay in Focus with Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just left um Walmart. You see it's dark. Obviously. Sipping on a little non-alcoholic orange juice. You know how some people get the orange juice and they mix it. Ah, but it's good though. Um, about to go home and cook up a good meal for my family because you know, my brother love cooking. Love cooking for my family. Love cooking for my people. Y'all yeah, know I love preaching. I love sharing because you never know what somebody is going through. I had a sister in Christ and I have um, been in contact with her a few times. A few times. And she told me before how she came across the ministry and she has shared some different things. She seems to be a, a younger, a younger sister in Christ. I'm not sure how old she is, um, but from her profile picture, she seems to be a younger sister in Christ, but very, um, you know, very mature. I mean, like, like 16 or 17, I don't think she's that young, but um, maybe like in her, tw her 20s. And she sent me a message, I want to say, like last week, something like that. And I got back to her and I responded. And remember the video I was speaking about the incubus and the succubus and the, and the different things that happens? She was responding to that and she was pretty much saying like, I needed that wisdom. I needed that wisdom. I needed to to hear that, and then she also gave some input, and I was like, "Yeah, you're you're exactly right. You're exactly right." Um. So, I, I'm real, man. I don't know what to tell you. I'm real, and the reason that I'm real, and I don't I don't tell the stories that I tell, or say some of the things that you may think is controversial because I want attention. I got a whole wife and two children if I want attention. If I really wanted attention, let's say, you know, if I wanted to be unrighteous, then there's plenty of women out here. Plenty of women out here. And hey, you may look at me, let's say I was single, you may look at me and say, no, nah, I don't like that. There's plenty of women that 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 do. Like I told you, I may not be as, as fly and look as good as I used to, but game is game. You know, as we say, spitting game and stuff. So I'm not doing this for, for attention. I'm not telling these stories for attention. I'm not telling them, you know, to be nasty or vulgar or perverted. I'm just being real. I'm a real pastor. I'm a real man. I got a real family. I got real problems of my own. You know, just like you. I just happen to be in the position that I'm in and you're in the position that you are in. We all deal with what we deal with. And what, I, what I've seen is a lot of these so-called pastors, they get on these videos, they get on national TV or whatever, and they're not real. They're fake in the, in the real, you know, you know, the old saying goes, the real recognizes the real. It's true. People can see these people are fake, but because so many other people are fake, they go with it. That's not me. I'm going to be real. I'm going to tell real stories. I'm going to tell you stuff that I that I went through. So hopefully, you don't make the same mistake that I made, or you use wisdom, you know. Because a brother used to be out here. A brother used to be out here getting getting um getting them women. You know what I'm saying? If you look in the scriptures, the downfall of Israel was always, always women. It was always women. Something deal with a woman. You can look at Balaam and Balak. There are many, many, many examples. And you can say the same thing for me. It was women, but it wasn't necessarily, it was women, but it wasn't women. It was myself. And 
in my heyday, I could pull a woman GQ or I could be busted. Like I mentioned many times before, I got a bald head now. You know, see, I rock, I rock the bald head. I rock the bald head now, I got the beard and everything. When I had hair back in my heyday, and my hair still grows, I know some people probably think I wear a hat because my hair don't grow and I'm afraid of my bald head. Nah, bro, it ain't nothing like that. I wear, I wear hats because I want to, and I have discussed why I wear hats. Uh, many reasons for that. Same reason you wear a hat. Leave me alone. <laughs> but back in my heyday, when my hair was more luscious than what it is now, it still grows. It's just not as luscious as it is. As it, you know, I got a thin spot right there. My edge up ain't what it used to be, but that's that's life. I stayed with a fresh haircut. Edge up. I was doing Steve Harvey before people even knew what Steve Harvey. And I had the real Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, when he had, when he had that hair... That was a that was a you know a wig or afro however you want to put it afro wig whatever, and you know they were coming in with the Beijing and everything and the, the liner and stuff like that and people would call it, oh you got that Steve Harvey. I was like that, and with my real hair. And if I didn't have a haircut, if my edge up wasn't fresh, as God is my witness, people would think something was wrong with me. They would think that something was wrong with me. They'd say, you all right? You know, you you you, you sick? And like, no, nah, what's up? What's up? Like, well, you ain't got no haircut. I'm like, oh, you know, well, I'm a barber and this and that, this and that. And sometimes I was going through something. Especially when, when, I, when I went through all that crazy stuff with my ex fiance. Good Lord. But thank God for grace. So I'm telling you all this because I keep it real. Real stories, real scenarios. I used to be that way. I really went to jail. <laughs> I was really making and selling counterfeit money. I really did federal fed time. I was really locked up in a room in a big old building with the Secret Service. True stories. I'm not telling you fake stories i don't do that i don't do that so when i get on here and i tell you these things understand where i'm coming from i'm in walmart i'm a man y'all know i'll tell you y'all know the way women dress today I'm not going to sit on this video and tell you that my flesh doesn't want to look at these women. My flesh wants to do more stuff than just look. My flesh wants to look and go talk. Hey, just go over there, buy them. Go buy them. You're not doing anything wrong. Hey, let's just, let's just walk by. And then walk by ends up being a, a look. And a look ends up being more than that. You have to be real with yourself. If you're not going to be real with yourself, ain't no way that we say ain't no way in hell you're going to be real with God. And that's the truth. Because that's where you're going to go. By not being real with yourself, you're not going to be real with God and you're going to end up in hell. So that's why we say ain't no way in hell. My flesh wants to do stupid stuff. My flesh wants to do the old stuff that I used to do, especially now. Oh, you married. Nobody got to know. She gave you the look. You think you can still pull her with your face looking like that? You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, uh, you know, trimmed up and everything. You think you can still get her? Sometimes I'll be having conversations more than I should. Yeah, I think I can still get her, man. Then Holy Spirit like, hey, 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 chill out, chill out, hey, hey, chill out. You don't need to be, don't be talking to him. People ain't going, a lot of people ain't going to tell you this. This is why the word 
speaks about the flesh and the spirit they war against each other. I think that's in the book of Galatians, so I, if I remember correctly. If there's not a war going on, then something's wrong. Oh, he's married, so that means everything goes away. No, it don't work that way. You're still going to struggle with stuff. But in Christ, you grow stronger. You grow, you grow stronger. You, you shouldn't, you know, what I'm saying? talking about that you save and then you get worse. I shouldn't talk about now I'm saving and then, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lusting after all these women. I'm, I'm knocking everything down, but I'm married. And I'm on these videos. I'm a buzz hell wide open. If that's what I'm doing. But it doesn't mean that the struggles go away. Most of the time, the struggles will go away. But you may have a moment where you, you know, you look or something like that or whatever it may be. You may be around somebody that smokes and you're not purposely trying to be around that person that smokes. But then you're around people that are smoking and then you're like, I ain't that weed smell good. I'm not a smoker. Um, but I'm just using that as an example because people deal with different stuff. For somebody else, it may be shoes or clothing or, you know what I'm saying, shopping. For most men, it's, they're going to tell you it, it's women. It's women or it's, it's, it's themselves. For a man like me, it's failure. Failure can be, a, can be pride too. Failure can be pride. Because a man like myself and some of you men, right now you, you know what I'm talking about. And some of you women, you can relate to that because you probably heard your, her, your husband say it or whoever. A real man doesn't like to fail. We don't like to fail. If we fail, it's like, oh my God. Because we want to be successful in everything that we do and we're supposed to. That's the way that God created us. But we have to also admit our downfalls. And that's called being humble. And that is something that's hard for a lot of men. Not saying that it's right, but hey, I'm just being honest. So like I said, I'm grocery shopping. These women, they dress the way they dress today. My flesh wants to look. My flesh wants to look. Tell you what happened. I'm getting in my car. I'm in my car. A woman is in front of me and she's getting out her vehicle. I'm turning. I can see she got on like some, some booty shorts or something like that. Booty, booty hanging out. I, you know, I can see I ain't purposely like, yeah, but you know, I'm getting on a vehicle and everything. And I'm cranking it up and I'm making sure my surroundings and I, she's getting out and booty. But I, you know, I see the, see the backside and I see the, the thighs and everything. So I go mind my business, but I drive forward and I turn to the left and I'm whipping it. She's still right there. And my flesh is wanting to, oh, just look, just look, just look. But the Holy Spirit is like, you're not missing nothing. You're not, you're not missing nothing. And so what do you think I did? No, you looked, didn't you? No, I didn't look. I ain't gonna never say I didn't. I haven't never looked before. That would be a lie if I said I ain't never looked. Yeah, I've looked before. When I know I wasn't supposed to look. I told you, I'm gonna be real. I'm not gonna sit here and fake like I don't struggle with nothing or I ain't never I ain't never did no I ain't never never cussed now, am I cussing every day no I probably cussed like I'm talking about like cuss cuss I ain't talking about saying nigga or you know this that or whatever I'm talking about like it's coming from deep within like f f this this net this net you know how it is in the last, we're gonna say last five years, maybe three times, you know, depending on how upset I, I was or whatever. So that's not something that I do on a regular basis. Just like if I look, it's not something that I do on a regular basis. I'm trying to, the Bible says to resist temptation. That's why if I'm in a situation like that, I go home and give my, I give my wife the business. I ain't playing no games. And the word even says that, it says that, you know, consent to separate from each other for the sake of, 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 pr of praying, fasting, or if y'all decide to, uh, you know, stop having sex for whatever reason. But the word says, other than that, get it on. And he says, because of 
your ability, your 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 weakness, pretty much. I forgot what he said specifically, but pretty much because of your weakness. Get it on, get it on, get it on. So the devil, you're giving room to the devil because what was happening is some of the men and some of the women in that time period they were holding out because sex you can control somebody with sex. Um, they weren't having sex with their spouse like they were supposed to. And then it led them to go out and do stuff that they had no business. Not saying that they should have been doing it, but I'm just telling you what the scriptures is saying. So when I deal with situations like that in regards to these women be out here dressing crazy and stuff and everything, and I'm trying to mind my business, when I know what's going on, okay. I go home, you wanna play? We gonna play. I'm gonna go play with my wife. I'm gonna go handle what I'm feeling righteously. Cause my flesh wants to do stupid stuff. So, as I just told you, my flesh wanted to look, but the Holy Spirit was like, pretty much don't look because you're not missing anything. You got a wife at home. You enjoy her. You're not missing anything. And so that's the point of this message right here. We as mankind, we think that if we don't participate in something, we are missing something. We think that, hey, if we don't sleep with that person, we don't fornicate with that person, then we're missing something. If we don't steal when it's in us to go ahead and do it, then we're missing something. If we don't do what, we've, what we have a feeling to do right then, then we feel like we are missing something. And God is saying, you're not missing anything. Have you ever done something as a believer and you were like, what was the point? I didn't miss anything. You may have said something. It's like, there was no reason to even, even say that. It was, a, it was a waste of time. And that's the core of this, of this message. You're not missing what you think that you are are missing by not doing that thing which your flesh desires to do if you're talking to that dude or you're talking to that chick and you know you probably shouldn't be talking to him you know the relationship probably is going to go sour or you're going to end up doing something you got no business Separate yourself out of that relationship Because you're not missing anything You think you're missing something And then what ends up happening You end up going ahead with the relationship And then you end up hurt Or crying or complaining about this Or complaining about that Or you may even get a baby out of it Now you're using the baby You're glorifying yourself through the baby Because you know, you're like Well I had a child and you know what I'm saying This child is my child and all this other crazy stuff. The child was conceived in fornication. Now the child had to deal with that. You're not going to deal with it most of the time because the women, what do they do? They boast themselves up. Like, it should be, if a woman has a child out of wedlock, it should be a time of mourning, a time of reflection, a time of repentance. And then we, and then we should move on from there. But these women today, and even the men, they be boasting about fornicating and having all these children and stuff like that. That's nothing to brag about because what the child is going to, going to have to deal with. What is it to brag about that when most likely that child is not going to have a father? The mama going to be acting a certain type of way. The child is going to be around other children that have families and everything or around other children that, have, that come from broken homes. And it's going to, you know, the, the, the effects of that is going to grow. What's there to brag about and boast about in that? That's crazy, but that is the mindset of people today. 
And I'm speaking as one that was conceived in fornication. My mama got pregnant by her high school sweetheart, but they wasn't married. They wasn't married. And my whole thing, man, my whole story was cr is crazy. Because my, uh, my uh, biological daddy, he was, he, from my understanding, he was knocking down, dang my mama and her best friend. And they fell out. But then the story goes that they said they were best friends, but they, I believe they were really cousins. So my biological father, he was knocking down my mama and her supposed to be cousin. I think they were cousins. They said they were best friends, but I believe they were cousins from the research I did and what I found out. Because it ain't big, a big town and everything. And the names, I believe they were cousins. And my um, biological daddy, he was knocking both of them down. And they fell out over that. I told y'all, I'm, 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 I'm real. I'm real. I did the video about how I lost my virginity. The crazy story, even when I think about it. <laughs> lost my virginity in Germany to a, a chick that I don't, even, I, don't, I don't even remember in a park. Pretty much I was raped because it wasn't really wasn't consent. And I was young. I'm just saying. You're not missing anything. By me not looking, I'm not missing anything. Even if even if I didn't have even if I didn't have a wife. Even if I didn't have a wife, I'm not missing anything. You don't have a wife or you may not have you may not have a husband or whatnot. You're not missing anything. By not talking to that person. By not sleeping with that person. You ain't got to lie to them. Just tell them the truth and go about your business. If you don't get that job or whatever it is you're trying to get, and you think, I got to have it, you're not missing anything if you don't get it. You don't get that car that you wanted right then. You're not missing anything. They make thousands of cars. They're going to make they're gonna make other cars. And they're going to be another car. You're going to be like, I want this car now. Or I want these shoes. Or I want that dress. Or I want, I want that shirt. You're not missing anything. Now, granted, if you if you have the, the ability to enjoy it right then in righteousness and it's not hurting anybody, then you go and you go get that shirt. You go get that nice watch or whatever. Those shoes, you can do that. But when you got a problem, you got a problem. I, I ain't, obviously, I ain't telling you to go out and, and, and sleep with people, but you get my point. You got the husband and wife, you enjoy them. Now, you make up for everything, all the times you did miss. <laughs> or you thought you was missing something. I know I did when we had our, you know what I'm saying, our honeymoon. I made up. I didn't even know that was in me. I didn't know I was that bagged up, just being real. But you know what I came to the conclusion, the realization of? Like, man, I wish I would have never lost my virginity. I wish I would have waited. And that's crazy. I done been with some bad, some, what you say, some bad, some bad ones. I done been with some bad chicks. I done been with some chicks that have been in magazines and some models and everything. And after doing all that, like the wise King Solomon, it's like vanity of vanities, all is vanity. It's like, I wish I would have never lost my virginity. <laughs> I ain't miss nothing. Now I got to deal with memories that I don't want to have anymore of situations that I used to be in and have to rebuke all that stuff. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you don't want them problems. You don't want them problems. These are conversations that I have with people on a regular basis who go through the same thing because we thought we was missing something because nobody was telling us differently. For us, we were ignorant. Most of us, we were ignorant. I didn't know any better. I just did what I was taught. I did what I was groomed for. I didn't know. So, come to find out, I wasn't missing nothing, but I was missing everything. Did you get that? I wasn't missing nothing, but I was missing everything. I was missing everything because if I would have did things the right way, then life would have been different. I was missing everything that God has had for me if I would have did things right back then. 
that's what I was missing. I missed out on a lot of blessings really because of no guidance. No guidance, nobody telling me, nobody keeping it real. Secrets, family secrets, all, secrets all day, everywhere, all day, every day, everywhere. Unnecessary secrets. Secrets that... We got secrets, family secrets that, well, my brother's still dealing with it. My brother grown like I am now, but he's still dealing with the pain of it. I'm straight because I got Christ, but my brother ain't saved yet. Well, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, I'm joking back in the day that he adopted. <laughs> Come to, find, come to find out that our daddy that raised us ain't even my daddy. <laughs> and the family known us the whole time. And he brought that up to me later in life and we you know, we squashed this stuff. And I was like, I said, I guess the joke is on me. I guess the joke is on my face. And he was like, <laughs> he laughed, I laughed like, yeah. It was a sombering moment because it affected both of us. You're not missing anything by not telling people the truth. You miss a lot when you don't tell them the truth. They miss a lot, you miss a lot. It's just a lot that goes on. So, I know I said, um, said a lot I know you probably was like why he started the video out talking about that well you know you gotta lay a good foundation you know how we do here we lay a good foundation and we build on top of that so when I say these things and you're like okay I see where he's going I see what he's talking about but uh let me go on to the house and um cook this food Got a little chicken. I'm going to throw it in the cast iron skillet. Do my thing. But uh, y'all have a blessed evening. Evening. God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared.